Hello, viewers, and welcome to the latest episode of The Huddle. Tim Poole here, editor of Gaming Insider, with Johnny Unknown, MD and co-founder of Davos Bingo. Johnny, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tim. It's nice to be here. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you about uh, Bingo, Davos Bingo, all things about the industry. But more specifically, I know you guys have had a very important event for you recently. Can you tell us all about it? Yes, Tim. So at the weekend, we uh, came to the end of the finale of our Comedy Caller contest, uh, which has been running for four years. Uh, it's it's sort of a big event for us throughout the year. It starts uh, in January with all the applicants. It's, it's ultimately a talent competition to find the next face of our bingo hall. There's various rounds. And yeah, it all, it all came to the finales um, on Sunday, the 7th of July. Mm -hmm. and, and this year, the winner was actually voted out earlier on, uh, I believe, and came in through kind of... Uh, I guess, unfortunate circumstances for another contestant. Yes, that's right. So, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, one of our finalists um, on Saturday, um, Lillian Wenker, um, who's a drag king kind of cowboy, great act. Um, you know, we were kind of thinking she, probably they were going to win. That There was sort of, you know, I mean, it was really hard to call it, but definitely was, was on to like a good run. Every performance had got better and better. Um, but yeah, we were getting messages on Saturday, not very well. I'm in hospital. It's not looking good. Um, they think it's appendicitis. And then come the evening, they decided they were going to do surgery in the morning. The show is on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> so we had a look at everybody and Drew had been in the knockout rounds with Lillian and was a few votes behind. They were friends. We spoke to all the contestants and we said, look, you know, should we put somebody back in to make it a full show? Everyone was happy. Um, and yeah, Drew Drew came in and really kind of upped his game, was really sort of like in control. It, it, I mean, the best act won on the day, but yeah, it wouldn't be Dabbers with a bit of a twist and uh, drama at the end. But yeah, we, we were pleased for Drew. No, absolutely. Um, I know last year's event was a, was, was a great success as well. Um, what did you kind of learn from last year? And maybe if, did you do anything different going into this year's event? Yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so it's been running for three years on the next top caller. Um, and we decided, you know, this year we always work, you know, we're entertainment at the forefront of our, of what we're doing with the bingo. Some of our shows, there is a bit of a flutter and a bit of a gamble in there on a Saturday nights. But most of the time, you know, we are really entertainment led. And to sort of, you know, pivot and be seen more, I guess, in the industry, you know, we work with lots of comedians. <clears throat> we thought, let's just call it comedy caller contest that's a simple simplify it we we really want the comedians to come through not to say it's not open to other people and we do work with other types of performers but you know com comedians is kind of where it's at if that's you know stand up or sketch or clown or physical comedy um you know we, we love it all so we we changed the name to yeah just just comedy caller and we partnered as well with the british comedy guide which has been really successful and has been a great relationship. They really helped with just the whole get the pool of people from the beginning. We had the biggest pool this time around, a lot of great people to to select. So yeah, so it's been it's been it's been it's been good to kind of move it on this year, and it's, it's definitely upped the ante. I mean, like I say, like Drew Cripps to be knocked out, who was a fantastic comedian at the beginning. I mean, you know, two three years ago, he would have easily got through to the finals so yeah the, the level of the contest was definitely definitely greater this year yeah big year ahead for for drew because uh the winner obviously gets to gets to call bingo at davers uh for, for the year and, and, and that's a mistake and that, that's how you guys did it last year and i wanted to i wanted to double check or i wanted to ask um i mean how did it go for last year's champ and and, and w w what have they kind of moved on to perhaps or, or will move, move on to in the future yeah so last year it was amy weber um, who's musical comedian? 
She still works with us. I mean, even from the get-go last summer, she was already on quite a trajectory. Um, mm-hmm. She had a sold-out Edinburgh Fringe run. Um, I believe she's picked up, I think she might have won the, one of the awards in Manchester Fringe. She, she, yeah, she's she's done really well. And she still comes and she'll do like a big Saturday night show for us. She still works with us. But um, that's the thing, you know, where, where we're at, there is a sort of, it's comedians at a sort of certain level before they kind of, you know, hit, hit the big time um you know we've worked with lots of comedians that are sort of you know bigger names now so it's that sort of we're at that part really on their journey where they're kind of you know they want to host they want to MC, they want to they want to do you know do sort of you know jobs in in london we do external jobs um before they kind of you know hit the tv and we can't afford them anymore <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, interesting, interesting, like, almost a natural segue into, I want to ask you kind of about the, the business side of things, um, because obviously you've mentioned, uh, you've mentioned entertainment quite a lot. And, and the, the really fun thing about my job, uh, you know, uh, we cover the, the gambling industry as a whole, it involves anything from buying a lottery ticket to sports betting online to something like this, because ultimately gambling and gaming and entertainment is if it's not already, it's becoming one. Um, so, in terms of you guys offer kind of social bingo, a slightly different angle to your perhaps traditional uh, vision of a bingo hall. Um, how's business for you guys, and and kind of, you know, how's bingo in general and social bingo? Mm. Well, I think in general, um, I met up with Miles Baron from the Bingo um, Association. Was it just like a month ago to sort of checked in? He's he's a great like you know just support her and helps with advice and everything um he was telling me that you know this this has been you know, obviously been a been a plateau and a decline but lately things have kind of you know has been getting greater this massive bingo hall opened in blackpool and other kind of new clubs and you know other kind of establishments kind of reinventing themselves so i think as a general things are you know are kind of picking up um the cost of living crisis and kind of spend going out has definitely had an impact we've had sort of you know quite a lot of ups and downs over the last 12 months um but you know i think that it's just down to yeah the cost of living and just general people kind of you know pulling back and and going out and spending i know i personally have become you know that sort of consumer now that's you know is feeling the pinch Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, these are especially when it comes to kind of retail and, and hospitality and entertainment. These are these are factors that, that all uh, come into play. Uh, Miles, of course, uh, a, a previous guest of ours on the huddle as well. And something I spoke to him about is obviously when the white paper came out. How it uh, obviously nothing's been implemented yet, but how that might affect bingo in the UK. As as I guess from the kind of property owner side, um, have you seen anything that might might potentially really change things for you or anything that you've seen that you thought that looks promising or perhaps that doesn't look as promising? Not, not really. I mean, I think a lot of that is kind of, it is focused on the online as well. And the online side of it is nothing, you know, that we sort of do in terms of, you know, we're that kind of gambling bingo online stuff with us, not that sort of industry platform. Like you say, you know, we're very much sit in the hospitality sector um, with entertainment at the forefront. So for us, it's it's other factors that affect our business. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, we've we've just had a, a general election, but I think um, again that that probably that will probably have longer term effects in terms of just how the economy responds. Ultimately, you know, I think once interest rates come down, inflation comes down, people are going to be spending again and going out. I mean, it's pretty pretty obvious, isn't it? Mm. You know, if they can do that, then. Um, I think you know people have confidence, consumer confidence to kind of go out. I mean, we're doing a lot at the moment to like, you know, we've just we've just I've just basically read on the whole of the building from the outside and our terrace. We've got a big Christmas showcase coming up. I mean, we're just trying to like just keep re- reinventing ourselves and and keeping it fresh to get people in. It's just it's a it's competitive because people have got less to spend. Yeah, well, and and to be fair, there's there's so many options out there as well, which which. You know, he probably doesn't do you any favors for saying, but obviously, you know, uh, plenty of nightlife in London, plenty of leisure activities and things like that. But um, you guys are obviously still going strong in that in that uh, regard, in that department. Um, looking ahead, sort of a final question from me. Um, and, and you mentioned you kind of touched on it already as well. Uh, what's on the horizon for Dabba's Bingo? And I guess looking into 2025 as well, kind of any, any targets and any projects and goals, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, we've just redone the whole facade of the building from the outside changed it all over 
um, which looks great. We've got a terrace at the front. So that's just pulling in a lot more kind of people. People are asking if it were a new business. So that's exciting. We've kind of had a bit of a rebirth um, and adverts and sales have kind of even just picked up in the last few weeks. Um which is brilliant. Um, yeah, some new shows. We work with promoters that come in um, and run run some evening shows. Um, we're constantly like evolving, really. With Drew Cripps, who's won the competition, um, I want to develop a new show with him. He's got this like beatbox machine and improvs, and it's brilliant what he what he can do. I mean, he kind of flipped the whole bingo call in again on Sunday. So I'm excited about him and what we can what we can develop and, and work together on a, on a kind of a new show. Um, aside from that, I mean, we're just building up for Christmas, Christmas trade. We've got a big showcase in July with all the event bookers. Obviously we do a lot of B2B and big kind of corporate work. So there's an emphasis on getting ahead of the game there. Um, it's a big showcase in July. Um, and we also go out, we do externals. We've got our bingo machines, which are sort of smaller versions of Mothership um, in the bingo hall downstairs. Um, so like bingo blowers that we take out and other kind of set and props and costumes and the designers that we work with. So we do sort of big stage shows and we um, go out and do festivals. So we've got all that kind of coming up over the summer and um, yeah, and then hopefully leading to a very successful Q4. Well, Johnny, best of luck with everything and uh, congratulations on a successful show. I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. All the best. Thank you very much, Tim. Thanks. And to our viewers, thanks as always for watching.